What's up? Mac Abski here. Thank you for checking out 997thepoint.com. Here with Ed Sheeran. Hey, thanks for joining me, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Welcome Good to Kansas City. On the Death Star? Yes, on the Death Star. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to add that in, so this is awesome. Never done an interview on the Death Star before, have you? <laughs> you can actually do that, right? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's do that. No, it's done. Lenny's a whiz. He's got it. Brilliant. We'll be on the Death Star when this airs. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. Um, you got... Um, from England, did you grow up in Halifax? Uh, no, I was born in Halifax, grew up in Suffolk. Okay, what was it like growing up? I mean, you started playing guitar at a young age. When did you start? Uh, I started at age 11. Um, yeah, no, it was fun. I mean, I, I grew up in like a farming town with like really chilled out people, so it was mm -hmm. a good, good, good place to start. Started off gigging at the local youth club when I was like 11, and then um, doing stuff at school, and then I moved out of home at 16 and moved to London and uh, started doing it professionally there, which was cool. Oh wow, that's, I mean, that's really quick. Uh, what, uh, what got you into guitar? Um, I saw Eric Clapton play on TV mm -hmm. on the Queen's Golden Jubilee when I was 11, and I was like, that's all right, I'm going to play guitar now. Absolutely, and uh, with Clapton, I mean, you're looking at one of the best in the world right yeah. there. Yeah, well, he makes, so. he makes it look a lot easier than it is. I was like, yeah, I'll learn, Layla, no problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, it's like, ah, oh, crossroads down yeah. in just a couple minutes. So, no, Clapton's one of the best. I saw him when he came through town, I played with Robert Cray Band, mm. fantastic. So definitely a good inspiration to get you going. I got to ask, we were talking about this before the interview actually started. What do you like to do when you're not playing, like hobbies and stuff? So um, One of my main hobbies is, is, is Lego. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have to say. I just find like, I don't know, it's, it's when, you, when you do it, you kind of cut out the outside. I mean, I'm, I'm, I cut out the outside world and mm -hmm. don't really speak to anyone for about four hours and uh -huh. just don't think about anything but putting the thing together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, that's kind of that. Yeah, because we were talking, a, kid, a huge Star Wars nerd, uh, I don't talk about it on the air that much, so, but uh, uh, you just did this, Death, the Death Star Lego. Yeah, and did the, the Super, Super Star Destroyer was the, was the big one. Yes. Really long. How, how um, many pieces was that? Uh, Remember? It took 10 hours, so it was a few, it was a few pieces, <laughs> but it was... Um, it's uh, in real life. It's meant to be twenty-four miles long, which is oh my kind gosh! Of cool, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But now I got to ask: You have this huge Lego say, Death Star. Say, Where do you I keep it at? Then? Um, yeah. It's um, <laughs> I'm I'm auctioning off all of them for um, uh, children's hospice in, in, in England. Oh, so look I've at made, that! I've made around uh, maybe thirty thirty um, pieces. So I've got like Pirates of the Caribbean ships, uh -huh. and Star Wars aircrafts, and yeah, I'm going to auction it all off, and um, it all goes to a children's hospice in Sheffield. That's fantastic. That's really cool. Until then, you have yeah, Lego <laughs> ships and stuff out. Well, all over your house. It, it's cool for me because I, 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 I get to spend my money on stuff that I enjoy and then mm -hmm. set, sell it off for uh, worthy cause. It's cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that takes a lot of patience. I'm sure it's just you can get in there and just kind of, it's almost relaxing. I just I do it before say. shows, to be honest. Like yeah. on, the, on the Europe tour that I did, I just uh, went out to a toy shop every day, bought a thing, brought it back, made mm -hmm. it before the show, did the show, put it on the bus and then just... Amount of them up, and they're all back back in England. They all they've all kind of fallen apart a bit, so I have to put them back together before I before I sell them. But, uh -huh. yeah. Well, perfect segue here. Uh, Lego House, one of your newer singles. Mm -hmm. The video you have Rupert Grint in it. Yeah. What was it like having him? Uh, uh, Rupert Grint, of course, from Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, having him on set and working with him in the video. It's it's very interesting. It you was know? it was it was really really weird because like from a from a young age, people have said that I've looked like Rupert Grint, and I've always kind of thought that's just because I have ginger hair. But mm -hmm. when you're on set. With someone that's wearing exactly the same clothes as you, same necklace, same tattoos, uh -huh. and everything, it's 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 freaky how how much we look alike. But you know, he's he's a really cool guy, really friendly. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier to have him in the video. It's cool. I mean, I did. I mean, you guys look a little bit alike. I mean, it's not a ton. I wouldn't say you look like twins, but mm. I did the double take when I was watching the video because he's just uh, you know walking down a road at one point, and I'm like, wait a sec, that's not it. Yeah. Well, my oh goal. That's Rupert. My my goal with it was to make. Like, because I didn't appear in my first three music videos, I mm -hmm. only made tiny, tiny cameos in them. So, like, if you hadn't seen me on YouTube, because I hadn't really done many TV interviews either, if you hadn't seen me on YouTube, then you wouldn't know what I look like. So you might think Rupert Grint changed his name, started <laughs> an episode of Grint, which actually, you know, most parents thought that that, that had happened. Uh -huh. There was a, 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 a pop band in England called Steps, and uh, they... Uh, one of their members tweeted, oh, I've just seen Rupert Grint's new music video. I didn't know he was doing music and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so that was, my, that was my kind of goal. I think you uh, might have accomplished it and fooled some people because it's, yeah, first thing you see it, you're just going, 
wait a second, kind of mm -hmm. do a double take. Um, let's talk about AT. Mm -hmm. Now, um, video for that, pretty heavy stuff mm -hmm. um, in there. I mean, even the song is just, you know, talking about drug use and prostitution and stuff like that. What, I mean, you're a pretty young guy and where do you get the inspiration for a song like that? I did a gig at a homeless shelter and mm -hmm. uh, met a lot of people. And mm -hmm. because I was even younger than I was now at the time, it was uh, quite an eye opener for me. And uh, yeah, it just inspired that song. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, well, we're gonna play that here in a second. Um, let's see, that is, uh, what's the name of the album that's on? I'm sorry, I'm spacing out right uh, it's now. Plus. Thank you, yeah. plus, I have it written down here. What am I doing? You're good. Uh, plus right. is in stores now. Um, you just got an EP that came out on iTunes, uh, Slumden Bridge. Slumden Bridge, yeah, with, with Yellow Wolf. Um, that's the collaborations EP, and there's also the A-Team mm -hmm. EP, which is yes. on, on iTunes, but yeah. Very good, check it out, very good stuff, and we're gonna play it here in a little bit. Ed Sheeran, thanks thank so much you. for joining me. Pleasure, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Awesome.